started in the beginning of block top so, by myself. Yeah, just so we can literally go and treat and quarantine. So the important thing is we put I did try to work together in the beginning when I was locked up for about now, um, uh, three months. That's 90 days of my life that I'll never get back. Okay. I told. So we just need let to me try finish, please. To let forward. me finish, please. And I told them, why don't you assess me while I'm without the medication, every single thing else? These are specialist cartridges, ECT people. And they didn't do that. That's I was trying. Okay, we'll get to work you talking. Okay. Yeah. Now look, we've been we've been thinking a lot about your situation, Melbourne, and we've given a lot of thought, and we've come up with a, a proposal for you. Now, would you like me to, to go into it for you? Yeah, Why ask me? Yeah. Yeah. You, you guys are you're the one well, who can lift it, so. Well, no, you come today, which is good. Mm -hmm. But look, we've got a proposal now. Look, I know you don't like being on the TA and having the injections. And last time I was here, your dad seemed to have the same view. Now, mm. the TA goes until around Christmas time. Now, we're going to think about the possibility of taking you off the TA uh, at Christmas time, uh, before Christmas. Now, in the meantime, you're not going to have to have your injections. Mm. We've, unless your clinical situation changed in some way, you're basically, you can continue as things are at the moment. And then when Christmas comes around, that's the time we have to review your um, order with the MHRT. We're going to, if everything's okay, we're going to take you off it. Okay, cool, no so, problem. So that, that, that's, that's what we're outlining. Okay, I from, thought you'd be pretty pleased to hear that. So then from this point to Christmas, I can work with that. Okay, I just want to know, um, why wasn't I given my clinical report? So do you know how long I've been on treatment already for? So you have been on a long time. So that a long, the, the entire time I've been there and I've been running and stuff like that, not a single time when I had my tribunal, not a single time I've nobody showed me my clinical report. And when yes. I actually did see my clinical report and then I started reading these words, word per word, and seeing who the people were doing it and you are just signing it off, this is before I met you and stuff, so the other case managers and other people who are well, located. So unfortunately, I don't think they need to understand how it's done. Doctor Snyder and I can't take responsibility for what's happened in the past. But what we are trying to do now is to work with you so that we can get the best outcome for you. And to try to work with you. So, you know, currently at this stage, now that we've seen you, we can stop the depot. But Dr. Snyder and I chose not to involve police when you missed your September depot and your October depot. So I think in good faith, we are trying to work with you. The only thing we need you to do is in four weeks' time, if you're able to just come and see me, I can, can do that. I can do that. At least I don't, I, at least I don't have to um, feel like I'm. Yeah. So yeah, okay, so, I can do so that. Can uh, you don't have to explain the rest. I can see what, what, what's going on. Okay, um, yep, I, can, I agree. Yes. Um, so we just need to make sure that things are okay. No concerns from Dad. And then in December, see Dr. Snyder again, because he legally has to see you 
to revoke the treatment authority. Okay, cool, understood. Um, in relation to the Yes. Okay, let's let's just stop there right there. I mean, in relation to the police keep coming. Um, the police have had just basically enough of it because I've been explaining to them constantly every single time. And the police told me last time. Um, remember, like, what well, you guys have to um call the police, and the police has to come and get me to my house. The police wants to know who the name. What was the name of the person? Who got the warrant out? Because I'm like, who issued the warrant? It's not a warrant. It's an authority to transfer. Uh, ATH, authority to return. Yeah. And when I'm, I, I'm explaining all that to them, and they said there's a person and a name for it. Now, who's that person? Would that, so, would that be you who has to call them to do that authority to return? I, What's the paperwork? I or? didn't have authority to transfer. Was that Melissa? Because, see, I tell you one thing. I had enough with the police cops mm. coming to my house. And all the neighbors, they thought, oh, we are the criminals, or we are the druggies. All the time, all of a sudden, the cops come, they just stand one corner of my house, the other corner of my house, and all the neighbors, they look at us. Yep. Yeah. Which, and, which I really don't like that thing. Yes. That's why I was really pissed off. That time, I nearly smashed one uh, cop's head. So I just pick up one log, I nearly went, when they just pinned him down, just for nothing, we are just walking, he was doing the holding, we are just doing... Uh, repairing all our tools. And I guess, you know, in defence of the treating team, mm -hmm. there are certain requirements under the Mental Health Act. So what we're trying to do is work with you to move forward mm -hmm. so these things don't happen again. Yeah. Okay. You're not really I'm answering not sure my question, I'd like but, to say something, yeah. thanks, Melbourne. I'm not sure it's terribly useful to focus a great deal on past events. Mm -hmm. Now, you should have been given... Um, it is, now, it is, it is. I'll explain seconds. myself why. Please don't interrupt me while I'm speaking. And we've been listening to you. I want to say one or two things. It is a requirement that you be given your clinical report before every MHRT hearing. If that didn't take place, that is wrong. And... Uh, on behalf of the service, I'd apologise for that. That is not the standard we work to, and uh, I don't know why you wouldn't have got the reports, because we can do things like put them in people's letterboxes, um, but it's a requirement, you know. It's not something that we do as a favour. We're required to provide you with the report. Um, so I just wanted my copy of my last clinical report, and um, it was the Indian Indian girl, she was my doctor, and she said, oh, you're going to need a freedom of information that to get now. What did she say? I'm going to need a Freedom of Information Act to get it now. Freedom of Probably freedom. to get, well, look, look I, I actually... I think what happened, Melvin, was you asked for every report. And so... Yeah, I know for all the other previous clinical report I wanted to get, so I understand maybe, yeah, I would need a Freedom of Information Act, but the, the most recent one. The one in Yeah. Oh, yeah. And she said, I'm going to need the Freedom of Information Act to get that one. And, Mel I and Melissa just went and printed it out the first time, so I, I, knew, the, I knew she was sort of lying or whatever. Yes, yeah, so I just needed a copy one because I've showed it to that many people. No, let me explain. So I've given it to that many people that it just got ripped up and so many people have seen it, right? So I just needed another copy of it. And um, that's how Melissa just went and printed it out. And I wanted the same one because so many people have seen it already. And um, she's like, no, I need to put on the information I have to get that one. Another report wouldn't ordinarily be put on around Christmas time. So the last hearing was the 12th of January. So usually it's within 12 months. So I understand, because I understand you guys have only this much power and then you're working for someone and everything. Okay, cool. I understand I can work with this. You don't need to explain yourself any further than that. I've already. Yeah. So, number one. So we'll schedule an appointment for you to come and see me here. Yep. In about four weeks. And um, we'll make an appointment to see Dr. Snyder in December, early December. 
and we'll take uh, you know look if things have been as they as they have been for the last few months your ta will be revoked if there are new concerns um we'll have to look at that and so it's not going to be just a complete formality i do need to be sure that things have been traveling okay and we will ask your father his opinion at that time as well like I'll explain, there's the police said that they know there's nothing wrong, and then I was sort of like set up, and they had that much, uh, they had that much, they had enough of it. They're literally going, they're telling my dad, can you tell your son to turn his location off on his phone so we can't find him? Well, that's the police. You know, the uh, the police officers may well have made informal comments. The police have a terrible job, you know. But I understand that. I know that. They have to go and see people. I know. And horrible domestic violence things, issues to do with mental health care, stuff like that. It's you know, it, the officers at times may have their own opinions about what's going on, but you know, things like the ATAP being taken out—that's a legal document. Mm. Now, it's certainly not the case that someone has a set against you here and is taking out documents all the time. I'm not sure exactly who took out that document. Uh, I would have known it was being taken out. Uh, but, um, you know, that's, uh, you know, we work as a team here, so it's, a, it's pretty much a team decision at that time. And it's because, uh, I guess because we, we know that you've been unhappy with the direction things have been taken, your father's been unhappy. We spent a lot of time thinking about it and talking about can we find another solution that's going to... Um, now, I am going to say something more for your father's uh, knowledge, but Mr. Prasad, if the TA is revoked in December, mm -hmm. now it does mean that you and other family members, if, if problems occur with Melbourne, um, mm -hmm. it, it'll be primarily your responsibility to try to deal with problems. You know, yeah, so if the problem will rose up, if he'll be just like he's normal, the way he stay with us, there's no issue. But the issue was actually, in fact, that the issue won't arose like that. The time we just traveled from America, we just came at our home about five or six weeks we were away with my and myself. And my wife, she went in our uh, bedroom, his bedroom and my bedroom, and removed most of the stuff from the bedroom and when he came home and he started looking all those things, we can't find it. Even for my car, she threw a couple of parts away, just like the... I can, I can, yeah. I can explain it for yeah. them today, better that, understand. That, that's why all the problem rose up, and uh, because of my wife. Otherwise, that issue won't uh, rose up like that. Well, even I was really pissed off. Lots of things, my wife just chuck it into the bin without uh, taking out I, I will, I, I'll explain it a little bit further. Not mm. just so, okay, that's understandable. Females do that when they go cleaning and stuff like that, throw these things in the bin. Okay, that's not what he's talking about. We're engineers, we're mechanics, we deal with thousands of parts. That, so we know where we put our things, right? They will go deliberately, go and move to like our special important areas and stuff, relocate it to another place and we'll go looking for that. It's like this. Um, um, you got a defibrillator, you got a uh, fucking first aid kit in this area. If somebody has a problem, you go, you know exactly where to go looking for it. You go look for it, it's not there. It's been um, put into the, in, um, in your smoker room. Things like that. So, how would you feel? How would you react? It's like myself, actually, I'm, that's a, that's a, yeah, that's I'm a, that's a qualified a, marine engineer. I've been there for about 18 years selling in the So, even all the perfect parts, everything, because I repair the vehicle, he repair his own vehicle, because we are just like that. We don't give it to outside. And sometimes, when they move our uh, sockets, put it together with it, because we uh, sort it out just like uh, we said 12 millimeter, 10 millimeter. So, we know all the socket. Now, if somebody just grab it and put it in one, uh, just like cupboard or anything like that, and we start looking for it, we can't find it. After all, we ask my wife, oh, we, I don't know, I don't know. And that's the trouble start. And because the boiler, we need the uh, right set of spanner where we put it. Because like you, if you put your stuff there, if somebody move your stuff from there, you start looking, oh, I put my stuff here. Where the thing going? And you start asking, Ask your missus or anybody like that, if that's the time you're going to lose your head. Well, they don't know why they don't. Look, look, yeah, I think we can, we, we mm. probably don't need to go mm. into that uh, yeah. further. That's how the thing happens. Does, does, Melvin, do you have a cheek, Pete? 
Um, no. Um, why do you want my JP name, Dad? Uh, well, you're not gonna. You've got the GP, so the GP, you know, if we take you off to the, the TA, the GP, the GP, the GP general practitioner. Yeah, I'm not gonna because of last time because Doctor um, Katie basically said. Just remember, Melvin, mm. you are now on C-Force Police Forensics Order. That basically means the police can now have access to your private confidential doctor-patient report. That's um, Dr. Uh, Kedia's exact words. Why do you think I'm repeating it? I, I, was, I was taken off. I was taken off, yes. So, this is a while ago. So, no, police cannot access your medical report. Then why would you say that? And why am I saying this? I'm this is not here. This is in um in that that mental hospital where you get locked up. The, the, now look, the reason I mentioned GPs um, is that we'd recommend that you have that everybody have a GP. That really all families. I, I do have a GP, which I'm not going to get give give um any information after because there is no history of me not, having any we, mental we're not records. We're actually talking about giving information to the GP at the moment. What I'm really saying is that if there are problems with your mental health in the future and your family become worried, the GP is the first port of call. That's what I'm trying to say. That's why I've said, do you have a GP? Oh, because yeah, well, yeah. well, basically what you're saying, I just don't want you to get so, uh, yeah, so... Um, but that GP that I trust, there's no record of it, and I'll go to them. And there's no, there's no history of me having any mental records. I'm yeah, basically. But you got the GPS. Yeah. yeah. Uh, who, 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 the same one who is like, don't put your son in there. Um, that's like a prison. Oh, uh, which GP was it? The one who picked up your heart one. That the same one. Oh, the um, Benfield practice. Yeah. 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 Look, uh, we don't have a view about who the GP should be. It's just that there should be a GP involved. Yeah. Now, it doesn't mean that uh, you can never contact us in the future. If there are major concerns about Melbourne's mental health in yeah, the future, I'm, I'm we are happy to become involved. Mm. The, the GP would be the first port of call. There is also the mental health hotline, uh, mm. MH call. So, you know, it's not that you're going to be on your own, but it does mean that mm. there is responsibility for the family to deal with things initially. Mm. And, uh, you know, at the moment, if somebody is on a treatment authority like now, it's a simple matter for the family. You just get ready to get in touch with the case manager, like with Angie, and she'll help you deal with that situation. The situation would be different in the future if there were concerns. Now, I'm talking theoretically, you know, so, so people are aware of this. Um, uh, Melbourne. So, not that uh, we don't want to uh, particularly send a lot of information to uh, your GP, although if there's a treating GP and they ask us for information, they're entitled to be given information. Well, yeah, we, I did, that's one of the first things I did, explain to my GP and then when they looked at it, they said, no, no, stay away from me. They were trying to explain to my dad. He didn't understand all this stuff in the beginning. That's all. We all understand the same thing. Okay. So, yes. well, we went now. Okay. I was my son and Joe for uh, four weeks and we'll make a medical review with Dr. Mm -hmm. Snyder for. Uh, Okay. Yes, we can just send them. Yeah, Angie, you don't mind taking carriage of that with uh, yep. with uh, Melbourne yep. and his father. And then we'll get the appointment made today. Before so you go, Mel, no. can I just take your weight and blood pressure? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Just making sense. I don't take ground. Mm -hmm. Okay. 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 Yeah. Thank you. Okay. okay. We'll see you in December. Yeah. 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 Yeah.